Hello, a chroeso i sgwrsio gyda Ecega, y podlediad gan gyngor y gweithliadus. Hello and welcome to Sgwrsio with the EWC, the podcast from the Education Workforce Council. Hello everybody and welcome to this first EWC podcast. The theme of this one today is the Youth Work Quality Mark in Wales and it coincides with Youth Work Week. So happy Youth Work Week to everybody that's listening. My name's Hayden Llewellyn and I'm the Chief Executive of the EWC, the Education Workforce Council. We hold the contract for the Youth Work Quality Mark in Wales. I've got three guests with me today and I'd like to invite them to introduce themselves in turn. Hi, I'm Andy Borsland, the Youth Work Quality Mark Development Officer for EWC. Hi everyone, my name's Bethan. I'm Service Delivery Manager of the Engagement Team at the Prince's Trust. Hi, I'm Bethan Allen and I'm the Team Manager for the Youth and Place Service within Newport City Council. You'll have heard there that we have two Bethans with us today, so nothing complicated there at all, but we'll try and navigate through that one and not talk about Bethan 1 and Bethan 2, but uh, we'll talk about Bethan from Prince's Trust and Bethan from Newport. Okay, let's get underway then. So Andy, first question for you. Can you tell us about the Youth Work Quality Mark in Wales as the lead for the EWC on this work? The idea of a, a quality mark has been around for 20 years or more. And the first attempt was by the National Youth Agency back in 2002, 2003. At the same time, the then uh, Wales Youth Agency were endorsing curriculums from local authorities. And Quivis, uh, the Council for Voluntary Youth Services, had their own quality mark. But neither of those were encapsulating everything that we wanted to in Wales. Uh, this led to some discussion and eventually Welsh Government commissioned a, a consultant to develop the quality mark and the whole sector took part in the development of the current standards. Um, this led then to a contract being awarded that was awarded to Atkins Associates initially in 2012 and when that uh, contract came to an end it was recommissioned or retendered and EWC took on the contract, as part of which we did a complete review. We now have the standards we believe are the right standards for youth work in Wales. Thanks, Andy. You, you've been with the EWC now for some three years, and obviously I knew you well from the sector before that. Um, you're still enjoying the work? Being part of the Quality Mark has been a privilege. Although I had a wide connection with the sector before, I've now got many, many new colleagues and I, I get to see some great youth work practice. Thanks, Andy. Diplomatic as ever. So, Bethan and Bethan. Um, firstly, Bethan from Prince's Trust. Let's hear from you then. What made you and your organisation apply for the Youth Work Quality Mark and what impact has it has uh, on your service? So, in other words, share your experiences with us. So for us, really, I started at the Prince's Trust about 18 months ago. And from the moment I stepped through the doors, I was absolutely inspired by the work that they do with young people across all our programmes. And just through conversations with my manager, the Youth Quality Mark has been an aim of the Prince's Trust for quite a while. And it was something I've always been very keen to lead on. So we just ran with it, really, last year. And it's been a privilege to write it for the trust as well and it's been great working with you guys and seeing the work that we do across Wales and seeing that being recognised and being able to celebrate it. And Bethan in terms of the impact on the service give us your thoughts on that and both in terms of the young people but also uh, the staff within your organisation and perhaps partners uh, as well. Yeah so we found out we passed the bronze last month i believe so we're still very early in our success at the moment but we've already had some great outcomes from it so firstly i would say our team morale has um significantly increased as well because it was a really nice piece of work to recognize and celebrate what we do with young people every day and i think that's made a real positive impact on the team 
and for us as well we recently put in an application to the welsh government strategic voluntary youth work organization grant and we've been successful in that as well and that's with thanks to the youth quality mark in gaining the bronze level uh, same questions really to bethan from newport so bethan talk to us about uh, and our audience about why you wanted to apply and also that impact on the service more generally, please. I guess the quality mark was something we'd looked at right from the beginning on and off. Um, and it didn't always, what didn't seem the right time. We're, we're in a local authority. So you can imagine going through financial crises and different things like that. It always seemed to be a little bit on the back burner. And not only that, as being a youth worker myself, is that idea that everything we do should be quality anyway the young people are always at the heart and did we really need an award what made the difference to me and made me want to do it was Andy had been a principal youth officer his background his understanding um, of what it's like when we face difficult challenges in 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 a statutory youth service in a local authority and just gave me a bit of I guess mentoring I guess as a principal youth officer as well and and said look at it from the other way and gone you're rebuilding a service and about I think his words were use the quality mark as a coat hanger to build your new service on and that just that just vision it that visually worked for me and it's exactly what we did and in terms of what he's done for us is absolutely changed everything and he came to our presentation evening um you know got a cabinet member that's really invested in youth work who even had a tear and couldn't believe where we've come from since september and, and it, it absolutely changed everything for us we were already planning and talking of our silver um, it's just going to lead to bigger and better things for us and again like Beth and said we've been really fortunate to to do a big bid for the youth endowment fund as a local authority um, and put in on there that we have the quality mark hopefully it's going to make that difference. Beth and it was really great to hear the, the passion there in what you said I'm going to bring Andy back in actually just to say something further on, on what you both said because it, it was really aspiring there inspiring sorry in terms of the, the things you mentioned and uh, Andy, do you want to come in and add anything to what Beth and Beth have said there? Well, firstly, both organisations, it was a real privilege to be involved in, in the development of the, those quality marks. Um, I was blown away by the Princess Trust and some of the stuff they did. So it was enlightening to me and when I met the young people there, it was a real... Um, I went away feeling I've done a good job. <laughs> but also in Newport, you can see the difference it's made to the staff body and the team there. Uh, the quality mark has really got them all behind Beth and then driving forward to, to prove their worth. Uh, there's never been more of an important time to show the high quality of youth work in Wales. It's particularly after COVID, cost of living crisis, but youth work is the constant that's always there and evolving with those crises and finding new ways to encourage young people to become bigger and better and new citizens. So Bethan and Bethan, do you want to respond to anything that Andy said there? I think for us, having the young people involved in the day meant a lot. We had our final celebration event on the day that Andy was there as well. And we had our young people kind of talk about their journeys and what the programmes meant to them. And seeing that and having them speak to external bodies as well, that gave them a real sense of pride and privilege that they were involved in this opportunity for the trust and likewise we had our young ambassadors attend the sort of assessment day as well and we had some excellent feedback from that as well they loved talking to you guys from the education workforce council and just sharing their stories yeah it's just to say the same really i think um i i underestimated um the impact it have on our young people um like i said youth work is a two-way process really isn't it and it's only built on a relationship if we haven't got young people we haven't got anything it doesn't matter how good we are and um, hearing them communicate to the assessors about what they really feel about what we offer them um, and also that they play their role even though we're youth workers and we know we come to work with young people it, 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 you know I'm I'm 20 years into my youth work journey and I'm still blown away sometimes of the impact you can have on young people it's magic, isn't it? And, and and that process that we went through together allowed that to happen. Just kind of going on what uh, Bethan has said, doing the quality mark, seeing everything come together, working with young people to achieve this award, there's something really special in that, there's something really nice in that, and it gives you the opportunity to work directly together. And for me, seeing 
that celebration on the assessment day and seeing like the young people it does make you like quite emotional and thinking I'm so proud to be involved in this line of work and help young people and to work with them to get this it's just ma yeah it was just magic the whole process was magic for us and I can't I, I can't underestimate the difference it made as well being supported by the EWC when those who come from a youth work background and have been where we have has made the difference as well does that they completely could empathize and and drill down with it with me does that make sense that 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 made the difference so thank you Andy Bethan and Bethan in terms of what you've said so far I'm now going to introduce some comments that we had very recently at a, a training day that we held uh, the training day involved a number of practitioners from across the sector both in terms of the statutory sector and the voluntary sector but they had some really good words to say and share about their experiences of the quality mark. For the year <coughs> um, people sometimes see us as Stelvod or residential centre but by having the, um, a quality mark in youth work it shows that everything we do in the organisation is youth work. Mm -hmm. Everything we do from the residential to the sports to the apprenticeship to all the support we give to young people is part of their um, personal development and their citizenship um, and their value to the to communities across Wales. What this does, it gives us that accountability to funders, importantly, and cabinet, you know, elected members, etc. From the staffing point of view, from what I've seen in the last week, they're very proud that they've received the qualification and having that recognition from an assessor coming in to actually put them on that platform. They're yeah, proud is what the, that's the word they've used to, to me this week. A big thank you to Catherine, Craig and Corin for their comments there. We feel that the quality mark, uh, even though the principles are are they intended for within youth work. We think a number of the principles and benefits from the quality mark have wider relevance within education. Share your thoughts on this one for us, please. The, the, the quality mark um, has far-reaching effects, really. It's not only a way of assessing youth work. We use it as a supportive tool for the development of services as well. So additionally, in terms of schools' youth work, many of the schools which are featured as part of the assessment process have started using some of the standards and the approach that we use to evidence, for instance, and distance travel of young people as tools which they've adopted to de develop their own assessment process for Estin, for instance. So there's a, there's a crossover there with the inspection framework. Also, our approach is a non-threatening approach. It's one which encapsulates the whole workforce and includes the whole workforce. So the point of developing an assessment narrative is one that we encourage to be a collaborative affair between team members, young people, and the coordinators within their organisation. The recent consultation with Estin on the new youth services framework, it's a suggestion we've made to include that approach in their new framework. We've also said about how the Youth Work Quality Mark and its use in terms of a development tool is good to develop leadership and management skills. So there's a definite crossover between what we do and those in other forms of education. We could encapsulate the skills that we train people with to do the Quality Mark and help others develop their own assessment systems as well. Andy, I want to ask you now about some of the other aspects of the, the quality mark, particularly around applications and how people who might be interested, having listened to the podcast, actually do that in practice. Before I do that, maybe just explore briefly with us the fact that um, in the time that the EWC has led the quality mark, we've seen a really encouraging take up from organisations in the voluntary sector. What do you think the, the driving force and the motivation has been for that? Because I know you and I have been really pleased with that extra interest and new interest from the voluntary sector. What do you think is behind that one? I think I mentioned this earlier that it's helped them with funding applications. And again, with the voluntary sector, everybody wants to prove how good they are 
or the, how good their practice is, that what they do makes an impact on young people. Moreover than that, the voluntary sector has never had an opportunity like this to develop their services. So again, we've got voluntary sector groups who are using the quality mark to develop their service and to change their service and how it, how it is perceived by the public, parents, carers, guardians, communities. It's having a big impact on the voluntary sector in particular. This year, for instance, we've got 28 organisations interested in the quality mark. Some of those are existing holders, but 15 of those are the voluntary sector, of which 10 are new applicants. So there's a great deal of interest in the quality mark from the voluntary sector. So Beth and from the Prince's Trust, uh, your organisation is a voluntary sector body. Would you concur with what Andy said there? Oh, definitely. I think there's more of an interest now in completing the youth quality marks. It has so many benefits as well. It does connect you with other third sector organisations, allowing you to have those conversations. And yeah, I think as we've all agreed, it does support fun- funding applications as well. Can I just add to that, that we've had a lot of new partnerships arise as a result of the quality mark, where organisations interested in the quality mark have joined together and develop projects. One stands out in particular is the East uh, organisation and Youth Cymru who are sharing premises and before they did the quality mark they hadn't even considered it but through uh, an interview with one of our assessors that's what's happened and other partnerships have sprung up in a similar way the Boys and Girls Clubs of Wales, Quivis and the uh, Police and Crime Commissioner so the quality mark is making an impact although it's not a direct benefit us talking together is making an impact on youth work in Wales. Thanks Andy. So Andy take us through the steps uh, for an organisation who may be thinking I've heard about the quality Quality mark, never been involved before but want to apply. Initially uh, it's a conversation with myself and we establish if the organisation is in a good place to apply for the quality mark. In some cases the organisation realises they need to implement some changes, amend adjust change processes or they realize that they haven't got enough evidence to to meet the criteria we will then work with them for a number of months to get them up to speed so from that discussion that leads to an initial expression of interest we then work with the organization and educate them about what the quality mark is we'll offer mentoring support we will explain in detail to teams what they need to do to meet the standards so there's a great deal of training that goes on so let's hear from the two Bethan. So Bethan from Prince's Trust first. What words of advice would you have, Bethan, for an organisation thinking, mm, as Andy said, a bit of trepidation here, but we're going to go for it. We're going to apply for the quality mark. What would your words of advice be to them? Do you know what? When I said to my manager that, you know, I'll, I'll lead on the bronze level youth quality mark i seen the paperwork or the, the narrative sort of thing and I thought, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> but going through it and the support you get from Andy it's absolutely fantastic it was absolutely brilliant they were always there to answer any of my questions and support me along the way with training and things like that and I think my best advice would be to another organisation is definitely planning and reaching out to other people in your organisations for help support and narratives but also to just enjoy it. It's a really nice piece of work to do. I thoroughly enjoyed writing the bronze, the bronze level. It allowed me to see what everyone in my organisation was doing, how we do amazing youth work every single day. And it was a really nice and exciting piece of work to do. So I would definitely say planning and to just enjoy it. Just take your time, take it one step at a time and just take the opportunity to see your organisation in full. And Bethan from Newport? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would back up everything Beth and Jess said and um, for me I was just thinking about it in my head I'm quite a visual thinker so it was coming into my head going what I got offered was almost a youth work approach myself it was that idea of what we do on a day-to-day for our bread and butter is telling young people come out your comfort zone and um, push yourself do you know what I mean all those things and and I was there was a youth worker and that's pretty much what Andy did really he came at it 100% as a youth work approach and was just like you can do this I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to do it together and at one point it was like I said it was quite gone I don't even know if we've got a youth service here Andy let alone going for a quality and he always said that's fine we'll park there a minute let's this this take it right back and we'll build on there it was almost like the quality mark became secondary at one point does that make sense to be able to get us there and it was 100% done with a youth work approach and how we would have done it with young people does that make sense I'm going to stay with you I'm going to support you and you're going to do this and you were going to see 
see how far you've travelled. That's what you did to our service, really. And, and the quality mark has done is allowed us to see the distance that we've travelled. And my gosh, we've travelled some distance in a short space of time. And like I said, we're, we're, we're currently right now with Silver. It will be in for Christmas, Andy, and you will be coming out. But for me, the other thing that was really nice was and, and really supportive was is it, there's nothing better than a youth worker, a peer who come and tells you you're doing a good job. There's something extra special in there as well. And when your assessment team is made up of youth workers, because for another youth worker to tell you that you're doing something really good and they've impressed it, especially when they've been in the game for even longer than I have, that's, that's, that's really special. And it's that peer-to-peer -peer quality assurance role as well, isn't it? More than just an external agency. Thanks, Beth, and thanks to you both, actually. Lovely to hear. So just on closing, Andy, I know we're always on the lookout for new high-quality assessors. Do you want to give a gentle plug to anybody who's listening who might think, I wouldn't mind doing some work with the EWC? Yeah, assessors are always needed. Without them, we couldn't maintain the high degree of engagement with the sector. It's great professional development. Uh, you learn new skills in observation, analysis of information, making informed judgments, and you truly get to reflect. In addition, it assists with the de development of professional learning networks. It provides learning, uh, leadership and management skills and opens your eyes to other types of youth work you may not have considered in the past. It also highlights to you what good practice your colleagues are doing and gives you the opportunity to learn from it and maybe to take it back to your place of work and try and implement some of those things at your place of work. If you're interested, I'm always looking for assessors, as I say, you need five years of experience uh, working with young people or in the youth service sector, give me a call or go online and use our web page to make uh, an application. Thanks, Andy. I'd like to thank you both, Bethan from Prince's Trust and Bethan from Newport, <laughs> for your inputs today. Andy, of course, as always, a, a massive thanks to you. Uh, the next topic that we're going to explore will be building on a, a recent masterclass held by the EWC and it will discuss the area of peer-to-peer -peer sexual harassment in education settings. The speakers at the event are going to join us again for a, an upcoming podcast. So if you're interested, please subscribe via our channel. Thanks all. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.